and China has made very dramatic steps. Uh, China has an advantage because they can make quick decisions. Now, of course, they can make quick decisions that are not so good as well as ones that are good. But uh, a lot, most of them in the energy efficiency area have been have been quite good, and they're they're getting compliance with what they're coming up with. Okay, thirty-five million dollars. It was very. That's but that's yeah. That's five from us, and then seven from uh, maybe um, a dozen others. So we've been able to leverage our funds by bringing in others. Okay, big country. Yes. Okay, and and you work with the government, mm -hmm. and is there a particular industry sector? That you I heard housing, I heard transportation, I heard a few. Well, let me just give you an example of the scale of things. They, the, there's a, a ministry for construction in China. And every year, 15 million people are allowed to move from the countryside to the cities. This, the ministry of construction has to build 300 satellite cities, uh, suburbs, uh, satellite cities, for 50,000 people each every year. 300 new 300 new cities, cities every Fif year for 50,000 oh. people each, or that's 15 million. And so they're, uh, what they look like are 25, 30-story buildings, uh, kind of in a bundle, with about 2,000 people in each building. Uh, but they have to have jobs for these people, transportation, schools, stores, you know, buses, whatever it is they're going to need. And so these people are, are moving into this area. They've come out of a rural uh, place. But this, they have to, to, to build that way. And we offered to help the Ministry of Construction to build the buildings in a more efficient way. Uh, just a simple thing was they were building what's called a one-pipe system for heating. On November 15th, they turn the heat on. This is in the north. And uh, on March 15th, they turn it off. And the people on the ground floor had it on full blast. The people on the top floors had their windows and doors open because it was too hot. Mm -hmm. uh, we put a second pipe in with a meter in every room, not in the basement somewhere, but in the rooms. And they could turn the heater off, and the meter would stop, and they would save money. And a lot of them started to do that. And within three years, the savings in energy was the same cost as putting the second pipe system in. So they were after three years. They were uh, they were much better off, and uh, it's so just something relatively modest like that sure. because you're talking about thousands of buildings, and so uh, each building improving like that is a is a great change. Oh, oh yes. So you work with the construction industry, the minister maybe. Well, they have no. in China. They have a ministry of construction. We don't have that in the U.S., yes. but it's a. Uh, they they are responsible for building that. Now they contract it out, but they set the the um, building codes. So, this is something that didn't take billions of dollars for you, for your organization to do. You uh, you found the right person, you found the need, and then you, you help them, and they are now doing it for all the buildings. For, yeah. Well, for, yeah, for all these these new buildings they're building and making a making a big difference. So that's just one example. You have but another? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, <clears throat> China was making a refrigerator that was right out of the kind that my mother had in 1950. And uh, it was, um, uh, you know, they were, it was, a refrigerator today is about eight times more energy efficient than one of those. And what they did is um, they brought the people in who were manufacturing their refrigerators, and I'm sure in a very polite and nice way, told them basically that this was not acceptable. Uh, this is the way they make refrigerators in the United States, Europe, and Japan, and this is the way they were going to do it. And they had to retool, and um, if they got good, uh, all their competition who was in this room uh, had to do it. And if they got good, they could sell it internationally. And so now they're doing that, and they're, they're, they're having a lot of different appliances and window air conditioners and so on. They put five stars on them and if they're mm -hmm. very inter energy efficient. They give um, you know special rates and so on for those. So they've really started to, to decrease that. Uh, the apartment buildings on the sunny side, I was at one end, they were building, except where the windows were, they had solar panels on the side of the building. And every apartment had a water heater, and this water heater was heated by the solar panels. And again, it took about three years uh, of savings to pay for the cost of the uh, solar panels. Okay. And so we put them on the top of the roof, but they were putting them all the way up and down the side of the building. Interesting. This was a initiative driven by the government. Yes. Okay. And and it's a good one, isn't it? 
It's, it's, it's working, yeah. It's, it's saving them power. Um, it's saving, uh, well, saving electricity, and it's um, also what we're trying to do is not only save electricity in general, but particularly save what they put out in, in some coal plants. Okay. So this is an, an example of a government taking an initiative and mm -hmm. making progress for the people and the country. And this is a situation where we cannot easily do the same kind of thing here because there's... But we did a little bit with, uh, with uh, in California, for instance, and that was what this Proposition 23 was trying to, to change, yes. and it lost. Um, so I think that you know we've had some we've had some rules. Um, and I think that ha have helped a lot. Now um, we're not, you know, uh, as far as the national government, we haven't done nearly as much. No. Okay, I'd like to just go to you for a second. A am I correct? You were the first president of the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you were the president for twenty three years. That's right, yeah, from 1976 to 1999. And um, it changed a lot during that time. When I started, it had about $8 million in assets. And when I left, um, after Dave Packard had passed on, it had about uh, $11 billion. And the initial mission, goals, principles of the foundation, what, what were they like? And then I'm going to ask you, how might they have changed today? Well, when we had a relatively modest amount of money to give away, we focused more locally. But we still had some international programs. We had some in Mexico, and we had some in other countries. But we focused more in, in this area. Lucille Packard was the real leader of the foundation and did a wonderful job. Um, she understood nonprofits, and um, uh, she was a great mentor to me. And um, I worked really hard to, uh, uh, to you know, improve the foundation and help it to, to do a good job. All right, right now, uh, what's the mission or what are the goals or beliefs? Well, it has uh, three big ones. One is uh, conservation and science. And uh, the key issue in there is climate, climate change. C conservation in science, is yes. that? and science. Oh, conservation and science. In and other science. words, the two, the two go together in many cases. A lot of, most of our science programs, uh, with one exception, are, are, um, des are designed around the whole area of uh, climate change and conservation issues, um, forestry. Is, oh, oh, conservation in terms of forestry, it's not consumption, you know, buying cars that you don't need things? Well, in, in the climate change program, there are the programs I mentioned in China, which are do the energy efficiency side, but there's also the other side of the equation, which is to try and keep people from cutting down their forests because yeah. a 24-inch pine tree absorbs about a ton of carbon uh, a year through carbon dioxide. And um, so, you know, we want to go over and give that tree a little pat and tell it to keep it up. Oh, I just want to ask, you believe that there is such a thing as climate change? Very much so. Um, if you look at all the charts, uh, you can you can see that the average temperature of the, you know, a number of different places in the in the world going up over the last you know say last twenty years particularly, uh, but even faster you know before that, but it's going up faster and faster. You can see the um, you know poles melting, and uh, for for the first time there was a northwest passage which people looked for for centuries, and now they have one uh, because the a lot of the northern pole uh, ice is, is melting off at, during the summer. And um, Greenland, the uh, ice caps there are you know, dropping down. And there's, uh, you know, there are all kinds of, of um, problems, and we're going to get worse. OK, so because your organization believes that climate change is really happening and that it's going to cause increasing problems for us, mm -hmm. the, the world, et cetera. You folks have that as one of your top initiatives. That's right. Can I just ask you, can you tell me the two more initiatives that you have? Sure. What, another one is, is the, particularly in, in developing countries, but is, is population. David Packard, for instance, felt that a, a country whose population was growing too fast could, uh, could never catch up economically and would never you know, get very far. Um, a country like Ethiopia, when we first started working there, the average woman was having over seven children. Uh, now, through a program we've had in the last about 11 years, we've gotten it down to about four, which is still too high, but at least it's, uh, it's improving. Um, 
Okay. So, all right. Uh, another one? Another? Well, another one is what we call children, family, and community. And it's this preschool, and it's uh, after making sure kids lose a lot during the summer, particularly if they have no, uh, no other program. And so we try and have some summer schools, after school programs, and things along, along in that area. And we also want to make sure that children are, are covered by insurance, uh, medical insurance. Okay, say just the, the name of that third one again for me. Children, family, and community. All right. I it's just sort of a, a number of things lumped together. But. I just want to ask my crew uh, to bring up two climate change paintings mm -hmm. that I have, I have done. And this one, it's not quite finished yet, but it's uh, climate change for the grandchildren. Okay. And I had a lot of fun uh, making this painting, and it's uh, sort of intellectual. Uh, it's sort of like we have an oil, mm -hmm. a drop of oil that's going to come down, and when it comes down, you know, we have a fulcrum there, and something's going to happen on the left side anyway. It's almost finished. Can, I, can we see another one? Oh, this one, you know, it's outside my studio. I'm standing next to it to give folks uh, an idea of the magnitude you know, the proportions, this one is called oil. Mm -hmm. And I think of it as the beginning of the end of the oil era. We don't have much more time, but I'd just like to ask you, you've been a president so long, you didn't want to let anyone else have a chance? Well, no. <laughs> but tell me, but then you gave up a lot of your duties and now you specialize on China. Was that easy for you to give up your duties? And we. Well, I think after 23 years, I'd had a good run at it, and I got to be 65. It was time to uh, pass it on to somebody else. And the Packard Foundation found a very good person, and now has Carol Larson, who's doing a great job. Thank you. My guest has been Cole Wilbur. I'm Michael Killen. And uh, I have enjoyed 